You ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Have you ever just had a dream? So like for me, I don't know why, but I've always wanted to be a whitewater rafting guide or to open up a Vietnamese restaurant called Pho Chi Minh or to be a writer on a cartoon series. Today, we're opening a, an animation studio. Hey everybody, I'm Nathan. Uh, this is my friend and co-producer Cody, and we're here to tell you about Studio Giblets. So let's let's talk a little bit about how we came up with the name Studio Giblets. So the first thing is that it kind of pays homage to Studio Ghibli, and that's why if you notice in the sign it's misspelled. It's an intentional misspelling to pay homage to a studio that we both really admire and were inspired by. And then the other thing Studio Giblets kind of means to me is it's almost kind of based on the style of humor we've done with our first show. Uh, a lot of our humor comes through word choice, using a funny word like giblets or a funny word like squeeze um, to kind of make the joke really pop. So uh, we initially started with stop motion animation. That original idea was shelved. We were trying just to apply what we knew in a way that we could do a cartoon and kind of just make do with. So we sat down with Cartoon Animator 4 and we watched an inordinate number of YouTube videos and then once we had the basics of this new uh, cartoon making software uh, we were able to say goodbye to the stop motion and hello to 2D animation. So then we assembled our crew. Uh, Damon Massa, the and audio guy. Uh, hey, I'm Nikki. I will be voicing Sidewinder. Hi, I'm Alice, and I'm the voice for Gumdrops. Hi, I'm Phil, and I voice the character of Jones. And now we've begun work on our very first animated series called Spell Slingers. Spell Slingers with a Z. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video for some test footage. How about you tell us about it, Cody? Well, uh, Spell Slingers is sort of a mash of different genres, including uh, Western fantasy, post-apocalyptic. So it's not exactly Wild West, it's just what they build resembles a Wild West town. And um, sort of like a uh, very uh, warm kind of friendship tone as well. Um, kind of a neat juxtaposition of ideas. Like at the very core of the show is friendship. Like the friendship between these two girls, Sidewinder and Gumdrops. Gumdrops she is naive and innocent, but at the same time, she's intelligent. The unicorns were fine, and those desert seals had it coming, but I'm drawing the line. No more cactus toads. She's really impacted by the idea of hurting, you know, these, um, this, the toads. Sidewinder and Gumdrops live in just a really uh, rough and tough world. Like their job is to go out and catch cactus toads and they take the toads back to town and they you know, squeeze the water out of them. It doesn't kill the toad. They're trying to like make this world better by trying to figure out where there's more water so they don't have to like go catch cactus toads anymore. Sidewinder and Gumdrops, they see this really hard, bad world and they draw two very different conclusions from it. I think Gumdrops is really driven by, first of all, how deeply she cares for Sidewinder. I think that's a really big part of it. And then she's also driven by just hope. So they met when they were young. Uh, it all happens in episode one, so I'm not spoiling anything. The show kind of starts out, and Sidewinder's there alone, and, and Gumdrop sees her there alone, and she gives her a fossil that she can go sell at the store. And with that show, that like one act of kindness kind of changes Sidewinder's life. And she is really good friends with Gumdrops, who they're like not really siblings because they're different species, but they sort of, I think, adopted each other. Well, the friendship is super deep. It's very, they are family and friends at the same time. They are the family that they've chosen for each other. Gumdrops thinks, oh, I need to make the world better. Whereas Sidewinder is the more practical of the two. You know, the foil to Gumdrops who would be cheery and entertaining and stuff. And in her mind, she thinks, this is a tough, scary world. I need to be a tough, 
scary person to survive. So, what made me um, choose Western music as a backdrop for this project would uh, just from the start off, I'm a big fan. Clint Eastwood days, Sergio Leone, Spaghetti Westerns, they're definitely, definitely my thing. And this just um, reminded me of a little bit of that. At her core, Sidewinder is a lot more like Gumdrops than she lets on. Sidewinder has built this very tough, mean, hard facade. But there's sometimes during the show where this facade just kind of cracks and you can see the real Sidewinder underneath. And then they meet Jones. Jones. Jones is a fun guy. When you first look at Jones, he gives off this like super old creepy guy vibe, but he's actually kind of like heart of gold. So they find this guy down there in a doomsday bunker that's been buried for over 70 years. He hasn't gone outside. <sighs> People. Do you want to hear my SoundCloud raps? So, um, have you seen have you seen the latest art for for Jones? I have. I I really enjoy his uh, his little uh, pony, <laughs> my little pony yeah. shirt that he got going on right there. Also, the short shorts. He's rocking them pretty well. I I said the same thing. Uh, he's like your typical pop culture loving millennial, uh, but definitely has a passion for doomsday prepping. <laughs> For Jones, we tried to imagine what would a millennial be like when they're 100 years old if they spent 70 of those years locked up at a survival bunker. And he's from the old world, he's from our world. So down there he's got things like pictures of dogs, pictures of butterflies, pictures of rainbows. And this of course just blows Gumdrops' his mind because she's never seen any of those things. And something starts to click for her. She starts to realize that the world didn't always suck. And seeing that rainbow was a defining moment for her because that's what sets her on her quest to try to find the water. I wanna say thank you to everybody who has been part of the Studio Giblets project um, and making Spell Slingers. It means so much to me that Cody or I told you about this show and you thought, wow. That sounds really cool. And that just means a lot to me. So I just wanna say thank you to our beta readers. Uh, thank you to our script testers, our art team. Um, and also a special thank you to the Shenzhen Writers Workshop um, for workshopping the script with me. And without further ado, I give you the test footage for Spell Slingers. Thanks so much again for watching um, our studio introduction video. If this sounds like something you think is really cool and you wanna support the studio, the best thing you can do right now is to hit subscribe, comment on the video, and give it a like too. Let us know you wanna see more, and thanks again for watching.